today, Bo and I are going to do the fuel starvation kit from Burma World on my E36 M3. But first, I was admiring my roommate's beautiful and clean 135. If only it was brighter in here. Oh, wait. Wow. Every DIYer's dream to have good lighting in the garage. All right, on to the project. Right now, I'm just gonna briefly go over what comes in the kit and then the quick procedure, and then I'll take you to the car and I'll walk you step-by-step step through everything that I do. The kit, of course, comes with two pumps. The original E36 has one pump on the passenger side, and then it has a return sender on the driver's side. What we're going to do is, while replacing preventative maintenance, the passenger side, we're also going to return I mean, replace the sender with another pump, and then we'll daisy chain them together, and that will help with the starvation. Along with the pump comes with another sensor. I'm sorry, electrical connector for the fuel level sensor, because now you have two fuel level, level gauges. This one will splice in on the driver's side. It comes with two barbs, which will adapt the larger tube to the smaller hose which leads us to we have a 12 millimeter and an 8 millimeter hose. The very first step actually takes place inside your car. Normally a lot of jobs we're dealing with anything that has electrics connected to it, you disconnect the battery. In this situation though, we need to depressurize the fuel system and the way we're going to do that is by turning the car on and we're going to pull the fuel pump relay fuse. That will stop the pump from going and then the car will just starve itself. We'll let it run until it dies. So go ahead and just turn your car on. Once again, remember this in a well-ventilated area. I have the garage door open and all my windows open. Ideally, I'd do this outside, but it's raining. On the back side of the cover, there's the key. We're looking for the fuel pump fuse, which is number 18. 18 appears to be three from the end. 20, 19, 18. We're gonna head, go ahead and pull this fuse straight out. And we're just gonna wait about 30 seconds until the car dies. It kind of makes you cringe a little bit because it sounds sick. But there you go. So you let that die. We're gonna go back and turn the car off. And then replace the fuse. I don't know if it matters if you replace the fuse before the car is off, but the instructions specifically say to turn the car off, then replace the fuse. You are now done with the fuse box, and you won't have to come back to this. You replace the fuse with the car off and you're good to go. The fuel pump is located behind the passenger bench, passenger side. I've done a rear seat delete, so I just need to take these panels off. But the OEM bench, that's pretty loud, it's setting car alarms off, the thunder. So I just need to remove this rear bench. This OEM bench is just friction fit to this connector and then there's one on the other side. So you just pull it and lift it off and it's fine. Now that you've removed the bench and you have access, by the way, this is this looks exactly the same on the other side and I will show you the other side. Um, but this looks exactly the same so you can do this at the same time. Remove the four screws with a Phillips head and that will release the top plate. There is an O-ring on the inside. You can just push this up the harness. Make sure that this uh, stays, helps keep fumes in. And then these two connectors will be connected to the fuel pump. That's how it gets its power. You don't have to worry about the orientation because the plugs are different and they, they can't fit into each other's holes. With the plugs removed and with, remember with the fuel system depressurized, we can remove this hose clamp and remove this pipe. It will spill a little bit of fuel. That's okay. Sop it up with a rag. The next step is to remove this outer ring. It screws on and it's a locking collar. The way that you need to remove this is by using a flathead screwdriver. Let's go put that to the side. Take a flathead screwdriver and then some sort of, you know, persuading device. And we're gonna hit the tab and we're just gonna hit it counterclockwise. And hope that it doesn't break all these plastic tabs off and actually comes loose. There we go. I don't know how loose that is. Let's see if we can do it by hand. 
just barely. Go ahead and unscrew this guy all the way. And there's the locking collar. You will save that. Now that you have the collar off, you can now lift the pump out. There is an O-ring sitting inside the pump that if you don't grab it, it can fall into your fuel tank. So go ahead and just pull up on the fuel pump. Snake it out best you can. There you go. There's your fuel pump and that's your gas tank. So don't spill anything in there. This O-ring sits, as you can see, it sits on the inside, kind of like for your oil cap. But there you go, here's your old, old pump. I'm gonna go put this to the side and clean up a little bit and then we'll move on to the other side and repeat the process. We can go ahead and disconnect our plug. There's only one on this side, so don't worry about orientation. And then we can go ahead and disconnect this fuel line. So I'm gonna get this broken off. Once I remove this hose, I'm gonna remove this collar and I'll pull the unit out. So you can actually cut this hose off because you're not using it. So take this ring off. And then remember the O-ring that's at the bottom that you don't want to drop into your fuel tank. Go ahead and pull this guy out. Can't get that hose off. There we go. There we go. So here's the O-ring that you definitely don't want to fall down in there. Just take that off. These hoses, this is what connects to the other pump. And we can go ahead and cut this too. And then I will verify if I can actually remove that hose from the other side. Probably just leave it in there. So here's your sender out. Just kidding, I'm not gonna cut it. I'm just gonna pull on it and it's just gonna come out. <laughs> Either way. You can now take that out, you don't need it. We're back and it's time to install the new fuel pump. Go ahead, and stick the float device down in there. Shove the, oh, I forgot. On this side, the O-ring came out. So we need to reinstall that first. Of course, I got this fueled up first. So, just make sure that this O-ring goes in there nicely. Once again, it sits on the inside of the hole. Here we go, sticker in there. Because a pump doesn't normally go on here, if you try to install this in the same orientation as the one you just removed, it won't go in. Remember the electrical connectors over there, this was plugged, up, uh, plugged in up there. So what you actually need to do is you need to just put light pressure down and then you know rotate it counterclockwise until it, it sits down in there. And you'll notice that it's way down and it's perfectly fitting now. We can go ahead and put the lock ring back on. And then we will go back and tighten this down the same way we loosened it with a flat head and then hitting the side with the motivator. The passenger side, this pump will go in exactly like it came out. So the orientation that we were looking at was the lifter on the left, the level on the left, plugs in the front, hoses sticking to the right. So go ahead and stick the level in there, or the sensor in there first. There we go. Perfect. O-ring's nice and settled. Now, we can go ahead and put the locking ring back onto this guy as well. Okay, now that these lock collars are on, nice and tight, and we no longer are afraid of dropping stuff into our fuel tank, we're going to go ahead and open up our connectors, and we're going to connect 
the one hose on the passenger side that we removed to this smaller nipple. Remember, this is the line that we cut off, besides the one from the bottom that we no longer need anymore. After you've cut the end of this off, you're gonna take one of our barbs, one of our reducers, and we're going to go ahead and put your connector in there. Now that that is done, we need to take our 12 millimeter hose, cut off about two inches, two to three inches, and we're gonna connect it to this. We're doing this because this is the right size for this guy. So we just need to adapt this. You don't want your hose kinking, so. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little bit more off of this. looks like. I have the small hose into the reducer. In this case, it's actually enlarging it. And then I have 12 millimeter hose on that connected to the big guy. This is all tightened down and ready to go. Make sure that there's no crimp in this bend. Now, the next step is to take our longer eight millimeter hose. And what we're actually gonna do is we're going to, just like how we removed the other hose, we're going to feed this between the sheet metal and the fuel tank, and we're gonna feed it to the other side. This is... All right, now that it's pulled through, I'm just going to connect this to the small nipple on this side with another hose clamp. And then we're gonna do the same thing that we did for this on the driver's, I mean on the passenger side. And I'll show you that in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to here. Now that we're on the passenger side, we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did on the driver's side to connect this smaller hose to the larger nipple. Okay, we're almost done. The fuel pumps are connected with the hoses. They're ready to go. Everything is tightened down to verify it. It runs under pressure. You don't want this blowing out. The only thing left to do is to run the harnesses. So for the passenger side, which, which what is what we're looking at, the connectors are already there. So let's plug those in. So on this side, there is only one plug. What we're gonna do is we're going to take this new wiring harness and what we're gonna do is we're gonna splice this into the driver, I mean the passenger side level sensor wire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed this wire through this rubber gasket in the lid, pull that through. Make it about the same length as that. We need to splice this into the passenger side fuel level sensor because obviously there isn't wires for that on this side because there didn't used to be a pump there. The way we're gonna do that is we look at our plug and we notice that from this orientation, the brown wires on the right pin, the green and black or green and brown wires on the left. All we need to make sure is that when we follow the lines up and splice into them right here, that 
the way we orientate this plug is that the brown is on the right and the green is on the left exactly the same as before i'm going to go ahead and pull the wires out cut them we'll crimp them together plug her in and then we'll be ready to test it that's done and we have our wire spliced in we're going to go ahead and connect these connectors in the new wiring harness goes on the bottom because that's your level sensor and then the old one goes on top we're going to test the car verify there are no leaks easy start it up right away no check engine lights the obvious leaks No. Does she rev? She revs. So now I'm just going to put those four screws on, put the plates down, put my rear seat back in there, and there you go.